So this is the key reaction in glycolysis. It is the reaction that takes fructose 1,6-phosphate, which comes out of the PFK1 step, uh, where we take F6P to make F16BP, and we split it in half, and then you notice F16BP is pretty symmetric, just these OHs are in opposite positions. But that's going to not make much difference in a second because it's going to become planar. Um, so we break it into two pieces, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which comes from this side of the molecule, and dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which comes from this side of the molecule. Now, of course, the first thing we need to do here uh, is to clip this ring open. And you might think that this reaction should be pretty favorable because it's entropically favored, but in fact, there's a lot of unfavorable entropy that ha or enthalpy that happens here that makes it unfavorable. And you can see that this is actually the rate-determining step of glycolysis. So we have to keep our reactants really, really high and our products really, really low in order to keep this uh, favorable. We have to... Uh, overcome this unfavorable free energy. So to start this reaction we need to open our ring and we're just going to do that like this. Our tyrosine residue here is going to pull off the anomeric hydrogen and that's going to pop the ring, make a double bond, and then we're going to protonate from our lysine here that's nearby. And I've just drawn this out of the way so it's a little easier to see this. Uh, but now we've popped our ring open. We have our second position is now a, a ketone, and we have uh, a deprotonated lysine and a protonated tyrosine. So uh, we need to start to break our ring open. And the uh, easiest way for us to do this would be to um, do a little bit of shuffling. Now, we this is actually several steps. There's like a whole bunch of steps in this react in this mechanism, so we need to do something special in this one. We need to form what's called the shift base. And a shift base is a C double bond N, so it's still a carbonyl style, and protonated usually. Um, this is going to make alpha carbon chemistry much, much better, and if you remember your alpha carbon chemistry from organic, you remember that this is often used to, to make alpha carbon reactions go faster, the amine trans transition. This is called an amine. So we need to start sticking a nitrogen on there, and luckily we have our uh, lysine straight uh, ready to do this. So we're going to do our first attack. So lone pair on the nitrogen is going to come in, attack at the carbonyl, and then we're going to protonate from our tyrosine. Now I have another uh, video on shift base formation uh, in the channel, but I, and I'll link that in the description, but um, what we need to do is form again our C double bond N. So we're getting close here, we have our tetrahedral intermediate, but we're going to need to displace the water, uh, and that's going to be a little hard to do. So it's a couple steps here with just proton transfers. Tyrosine is going to grab this hydrogen and solve the nitrogen's positive charge problem. And then we are going to be able to collapse our shift base and get protonated this way. So now we've formed our key intermediate. So there, here is our shift base. Now that is covalently linked into the enzyme's active site. Uh, so this is not going anywhere until we finish the reaction. It's pretty much committed at this point. And so you can see why this reaction is unfavorable. It does lots of, uh, lots of steps uh, to do a pretty simple thing. Now this is the key part. This is where we're going to make our first product. Our tyrosine is going to pull hydrogen here, and it's going to break into two three-carbon pieces. Here's the one. This is going to become DHAP, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and this part is going to become glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So when we pull that hydrogen, it's going to make a double bond here. And again, the whole reason for making this shift base was so that we could do this set of arrow pushes. This bond here is going to break. It's going to become an enamine, which is a C double bond C. It's very similar to a ketoenol transition, uh, but it is with a nitrogen instead of an oxygen. So here is essentially it's like an enol. Uh, 
it's in fact an ene amine. Uh, so it's very similar, except it's more favorable to do this because nitrogen likes positives more than oxygen does. So it can tolerate it. In fact, we don't even need a positive here, do we? Pretty simple. So let's get rid of that. Because now we only have three bonds to nitrogen and we're stable. Now, key thing here is we've just broken this carbon-carbon bond. And because we have the shift base, that allows us to break carbon-carbon bonds. We're going to see this again when we get to the pentose phosphate pathway. And we're going to do it in reverse several times, too. Um, so here is this is the important arrow push. Okay, so we have our first product, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Uh, that is going to be released. Remember, this is one of the simple sugars, 3 carbons, but it's phosphorylated. Now we have to free up the enzyme's active site, which is bound to this DHAP derivative. And we're going to kind of go back to our shift base. Now that we got it, anytime you have a lone pair uh, that's in the allylic position to a double bond, like you see this one, you're always going to form resonance forms as you push through. Uh, in this case, we're going to push resonance here, and it's going to grab a hydrogen off of our tyrosine. Okay, so we've reformed our shift base. And again, that's going to give us reactivity that we usually wouldn't have. So there's our shift base right here. And it's going to develop quite a bit of positive charge here at the nitrogen, at the carbonyl nitrogen. Um, so we can see that we have inductive positive from the nitrogen and uh, quite a bit of inductive positive, uh, formal positive on the nitrogen, and quite a bit of inductive positive on the carbon. And that's going to make it a nice tasty target for water to start breaking this open and undoing our shift base. So that's what we're going to do. We have a nice tasty target. We're going to go and attack it, and we're going to solve the nitrogen's charge problem again. Now we have our water bound in. Of course, we have our tyrosine around to help deal with some charges. And now we can force that lysine residue off by grabbing a proton from that tyrosine. So now we have a protonated dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Our lysine is almost ready to go. We just need to recharge it to the original state. And if you remember in the first state we had a deprotonated tyrosine, we had a protonated lysine. So to recharge the enzyme we just need to use this to grab our hydrogen. And then we're done. So here's our dihydroxyacetone phosphate. It's going to be released into the surroundings, and our enzyme, our lysine and our tyrosine, have been completely recharged and are ready for another round of aldolase.